with a typical installation of the CentOS 5.4 Linux distribution. After you place the installation CD in the computer and power it on, you are presented with the initial installation screen that gives you the option to perform the installation in graphical or text mode. Pressing Enter starts the graphical mode installation. Linux loads the initial boot files and provides status information as it checks various aspects of the system hardware. You are prompted to test the installation media or skip that test. We'll skip the test. Anaconda starts, which is the name of the installation program on many Linux distributions. Next, the video card is configured so that the installation can run in a graphical mode. Once the graphical environment is configured, the installation resumes in GUI mode. The first screen of the graphical installation mode prompts you to click Next. The next couple of screens let you choose the language for the installation and the keyboard. On a system that has a blank hard drive, you will get a warning message indicating that the partition table was unreadable and the operation will erase all data on the drive. This is normal for unformatted, unpartitioned drives. We'll just click Yes, since there is no data on the drive to erase. CentOS searches for existing operating systems so it knows whether to do an update or a fresh install. The next screen lets you partition your drives if you want to create a custom partitioning scheme. Or you can accept the default layout. You also have the option of encrypting the drive. We'll choose the default. You are prompted to confirm your choices and warn that all data will be removed. Next, you configure networking. You are presented with a list of network interfaces Linux detected. You can make changes to the settings by clicking Edit. You can choose to use a dynamically assigned IP address using DHCP or set a static IP address. You can also choose settings for IPv6. You can also set the host name for your Linux computer or accept the default value of localhost.localdomain. In most environments, you should set the host name to something descriptive. We'll use centosweb.mydomain.local since I want to use this to be a web server. Next, you set the time zone, which you can do by clicking on the appropriate region of the map. You need to set the password for the root account after that. Since most Linux vendors don't have a separate desktop versus server distribution, you select the role of the OS during installation. You can select one or more roles for the server. In this case, we'll choose both Desktop GNOME and Server GUI, which means many of the desktop programs are installed as well as the server programs. The desktop choice has two options, GNOME or KDE. GNOME and KDE are desktop managers that affect the look of the user interface and some of the applications that are installed. If you don't have a preference, you can try both to see which you prefer. Now you wait while Linux formats the drive, installs the OS, and installs your chosen software options. Once this phase of installation is complete, you reboot the system. But you aren't done yet. You still have some choices to make before installation is complete. The next phase of installation has you choose firewall settings. Initially, the firewall is set to block most incoming connections, with the notable exception of SSH, which is the secure shell protocol that lets you manage the OS remotely through a command prompt. Since this server will be a web server, we'll check www and secure www to allow those connections. You also have the option of disabling the firewall, which is not recommended unless you'll be using another firewall application. You can configure SE Linux, which is Security Enhanced Linux, to either the Enforcing, Permissive, or Disabled state. In most cases, you should choose the Enforcing state. The Permissive state warns you about detected security threats, but does not deny them. A couple more clicks and you're finished. Enabling KDump reserves space for Linux to capture information that can be used to determine the cause of a system crash. If you enable it, you'll have less available RAM for applications. Next, you set the date and time if necessary, and then you create a user that you will typically use to log on to Linux.
You can set up and test the sound card on the next screen. And finally, if you have additional CDs you want to install software from, you can do that here. Linux reboots one last time and you are prompted to log on. CentOS lets you log on as the root user if you like, which we'll do now. You are finally greeted with the Linux desktop. Let's quickly browse what's available. As you can see, Linux comes equipped with a number of built-in applications and utilities. But aside from being a top-notch server OS and a very good desktop system, where Linux really shines is the games.